Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt, and uh, once again, I want to help you uh, pass your exam. And one way you could do it is to stop wasting time on uh, irrelevant questions. There's no orange book. There hasn't been an orange book in the real world since 2005, um, but uh, I had uh, questions. I've been teaching this for 20 years, and I had people still getting orange book questions well into 2007. Uh, I don't recall anybody ever getting one for the last 12 years. And I, I teach at least 10, 10 classes a year, and I get a lot of feedback. So, uh, so let's try to understand what's going on here. Uh, a quick commercial for my stuff. I got to do this, you know, blah, 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 blah. But uh, it is yearly memberships. Look at that price. You can't beat it now that you're working from home, right? All right, so the history of it goes like this. You know, the United States military, uh, like Sun Tzu, you know, you got to know yourself, got to know your enemy, you got to store this knowledge, you got to captain's log, you got to store data, and you're going to store it on a computer now instead of paper. Some people could read it, some people could write to it, some people do both, and, and they'd say, well, you know, on paper, if you don't have the clearance to write these documents, you can't do it. How do we, how do we trust this on a computer? Let's specify our requirements on what a computer has to do. These are the requirements. This is what, if you want to get your computer in here, Microsoft or Novell in those days, Banyan, anybody remember them? Uh, and I think they all got Orange Book C2, too. too. Yeah. So they never get the B levels. You got to do Bill LaPagula for that, you know, whatever. Uh, these are the requirements of what you need to do in 1983 and then later updated in 85. And uh, I think they made updates. I, I don't know exactly. I can't find a lot of stuff, but to 2001, and I don't want to research too much of it. There's others that I can but I know it officially died. In 2001, they knew the common criteria was out there. I mean, they were looking at other countries, so friendly nations, Canada, uh, the UK, they were sharing some of the things they were doing. We were getting a little of the grass is greener over there. Oh, you do functionality and assurance separately. Looks good. You know, why don't we all come together? And we came together with a, an ISO, the Federation. You know, if you're not familiar with the Federation, but I'll show you in a second here. Uh, but when you get like Federated Identity Management, that means you're trusted. I'm a Star Trek fan, so the ISO to me is a federation. Uh, it all became the common criteria, ISO 15408. In 2005, again, no test question since 2007. Uh, 2009, it was updated again. It was reviewed in 2015, and something else is coming out. It's still going to be the common criteria. It's just a little, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with it, uh, I guess, until it comes out. So I'll show you. Uh, so the TCSEC, again, this was uh, developed by the uh, the National Computing Security Center, the NCSC, an arm of the NSA. Well, I don't want to click at the NSA, but let's take a look at what the NCSC does. They don't do it anymore. That's long gone. That's why it doesn't take me anywhere. Again, like the orange book, all this stuff is gone. You know, there's no orange book in the test. Um, and again, there was other things in, in the UK. They, they had a different one. It seemed a little bit more sophisticated in 1990. Sure, they're going to come up with this. And the Canadians, they were in 92. You know, they're real advanced. But we're like, come on, let's just work together. Let's come up with something together. And when you take your test, stop preparing for orange book questions. But you better be prepared for 15408, also known as the common criteria. Now, uh, the ISO, again, is the federation. And, and one problem, <laughs> I just like to point out, people think it means it's an acronym. It's not an acronym. In fact, their name is International for Standardization. The word ISO it's Greek. It, uh, it means equal. So, you know, there's now currently 165 member bodies. You know, this is like the Federation of Planets, if you're a Star Trek, you know. From Afghanistan, you have representation all the way to Zimbabwe. And I don't care what religion, what country you come from, you know. I care that you stop at red lights, and you should care that I allow you to go at green, and that's what this is for. You know, governance, risk, and, uh, and compliance. Governance comes from the Greek to steer a ship. Risk comes from the Greek to watch out for cliffs underwater, you know, unforeseen danger. But compliance, our first laws that I could find are, you know, international laws or shipping laws. Sure, sure, it makes sense, you know. And you got to be compliant. And, and, and I don't care what country you're from, you're, you're supposed to board on the port side. That's the standard. That's yeah, pretty cool. Now, each one of these countries has a member body in the United States to represent us. We have ANSI. So when you hear like, the, oh, the ASCII key set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for some things, they delegate it to other people. In the United States, the common criteria was delegated to NIAP, which is a division of the NSA. Right? So this is basically what the National Computing Security Center has been since 2005. Actually, 
Uh, I won't get too deep here, but when it first came out, it was always a Booz Allen. If anybody knows this, if anybody's old enough, remember the 2005, this was, that's what we are. Uh, now it's maintained independently and Booz Allen is not the only in- laboratory could do it. So instead of colored books, orange for operating systems, red for networking or whatever, we have protection profiles. These are the requirements. This tells you this is what any system must do. If you want to be certified in the United States anyway, you know, your operating system, uh, whatever, better be able to meet these requirements. That's what it is. Right? And then when something's evaluated, we see that you see they get put on the product compliant list. And let's step through one of these. And this is, I'm just, you know, uh, it's the latest one. So let's just see what happens here. When you go to, and all this stuff is testable, Cisco wanted to get, Cisco is the vendor, right? Cisco is a vendor who wants to get their product. Uh, let me get my drawing tool here. Hey, where's my drawing tool? They, uh, they want to get their product, vendor, in this case, equals Cisco. Their product uh, to be evaluated is the, um, I should say, the techno- their technology product. Why do I do that? Because these are always for technologies. G uh, equals um, the wireless LAN 8.10. Yep. That will be the thing that's get evaluated. That is the target of evaluation. It looks like they've already been evaluated. <laughs> That's why they're on this list. Obviously, they have. And they claimed that they did meet the requirements of the protection profile. They claimed that. Yeah, we do that. Well, before I go test it, describe how you did that. So they have an architecture. They describe the architecture. Or something that I say how they met requirements, how to meet requirements. This is how we do it. Oh, you say you could do it? Yeah, tell me how you did it. We did it this way. That's the security target. It's their job to fill out the paperwork, to get even, you know, <laughs> so they have to write it out. And so this, in a large company, is probably done by so this is the Cisco wireless LAN security target. It was just written here, you know, uh, the revision here. And it was prepared uh, by Cisco. You know, Cisco prepares their own. Some companies hire other people, whatever the case is. And it describes what they can do. All right. So this is how it works. Oh, okay. Well, then an independent laboratory, some ISO Federation approved, NIAP approved laboratory in this case, the common criteria testing laboratory is accurate. Acumen is one of currently in the United States as of August, I think it's this list of change all the time, August of 2020, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there it moves on. Uh, uh, they've been there for a long time. Anyway, so they get to test it. And the first thing they do is they look at the security target. Does this actually address, oh, it looks like there's two of them. Why is there two of them? Well, the product, it's a, what is it? It's a Cisco wireless LAN. Well, then they met the protection profile for network stuff. Yeah, you got to meet the protection profile for network devices. But we have a separate one just for, it's an extended package to that for wireless LAN access. Ah, so they got it. Their security target has to address that they met both of these things. So this is like the protection profile just for network devices. And then there's an extension to that uh, if there's also wireless LAN stuff and and they'd have to meet these requirements. And they said, we did. You can read our security target. We did. And then if it did, then they test the actual product. And if that worked, they get a certificate. And you can see that obviously did. And there were, uh, you know, this is a, a certificate that means you're certain. It's a technical review. And they got, I uh, wonder what evaluated assurance level they got. They got compliant. This is weird, and I don't know what's going on for your tests. So as I read, even the updated version, so uh, if we look at the, the latest uh, version of 15408, what, what's proposed, what's coming out, the DIS version, it's not out yet. But if I look for uh, things like um, uh, EAL levels, uh, 
I can see EALs defined, but nobody in NIAP has supported an EAL level for me in a long time. I haven't seen EAL levels, and I believe the date was 2014. So I don't know. I do know that up until the middle of I'd say March of 2019, I did get two questions that people got on EALA levels. And you had to memorize them. One's a drag and drop EAL. If it's functionally tested, sure, you got to get EAL one. But we really haven't supported them in the United States. And I don't know how they're going to continue to be supported. Because the reason this isn't out, because they haven't finished and made up their mind yet, right? I mean, that's what happens. Now, instead of an orange book, you get a protection profile. And so we get protection profiles for operating systems, right? So this is replaces the orange book as far as the United States is concerned. Now, one of the things that I know is still, yeah, see, here's the problem too. When I say don't study the orange book, there are terms used in the orange book that uh, my experience were introduced there that are testable terms and concepts. So they won't say, at what EAL, or excuse me, uh, uh, which of the following, B2, B3, whatever, do, does, do we analyze covert channels? They're not going to ask you that, but they'll definitely ask about covert channels. And I just found it interesting, covert timing and covert storage in the old days. Covert storage were identified and analyzed B2, but covert timing, V3, whatever. They're not even here. There's a lot of cloud stuff on the uh, test now. If you're not prepared, you better brush up on cloud. In fact, I like to think CCSP is a great prep for CISSP. They have protection profiles for virtualization. Here, they got a lot of references to covert channels. There are nine references to covert channels. So, you know, they might have scrambled around where things are. Covert channels are still very important. Well, I hope that helped you and saved you some time, though. Please do not worry about orange book to certainly don't memorize what happened to be one what's the difference between uh, uh, trusted recovery versus you know it, it's it's certainly not levels actually trusted recovery is a pretty cool thing uh and you know what my favorite word that came out of the orange book you didn't have like when i grant you permission i'll do this on another download but you know in microsoft if i if i you know look at the properties this is mine i, I own this i can i can set permissions yeah, at, the, at my discretion, which would have been a, a C2, you know, I, I could set these permissions. In the orange book, they didn't call them permissions. They're called capabilities. I should have the read or the write capability depending on my clearance level. That's pretty funny. The ISA sometimes calls them entitlements. I'm a member of sales. I should be entitled to any role-based access control. All right. I hope that helped. Uh, guys, also, uh, I've been doing this for, uh, the, if you haven't seen, I, I'm, I want you to get my class. And if, if the pandemic is affecting you and you can't afford it, uh, I'm going to give you a no risk deferred payment. You can sit here at my class um, and I'm going to wait 12 months before I even ask you for any money. Unless, unless you get it before then, my wife would be very happy if we got paid. Yeah. I'm suffering too. <laughs> this little thing. Uh, but we can all work it out together and get better as a team. And, and if at the end of the 12 months, you know, you can't afford it, well, sure we can. We'll forget that. It's no big deal. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Live long and prosper.